Katzenberg hired John Fusco, who is well known for his contribution to the Western and Native American genres, around 1998 to be the main writer of the movie, as it was a pet project for Katzenberg. The people who worked on the film went to the Western United States to study the scene and atmosphere for inspiration. Horses were brought into the studio for the animators to study their movement, sound, and behavior. Most of the people who worked on this film went right to Shrek 2 after this film was completed, as the inspirations of horses went into that film. The studio received a lot of help from the Lakota Indians, as some of the actors had ties to Native ancestry and the Lakota tribe to include in their input. Tom Hanks and Robert Redford were considered the role for the narration, but it was ultimately given to Matt Damon. According to the production notes I found, the narration was included while production was close to ending as the animation was done before they started casting. Esperanza gives birth to a male doe named Spirit, and we see how he stands up from all the other horses in the herd. All of the horses are free to roam wherever they like, which ties into the main plot point and theme of the film. We also have a montage song that shows how he ages into a young adult version of a horse. We even have Matt Damon narrating. The American army is settled where the horses are, and they are on their quest to win the American Indian War to take over the West. He decides to investigate the site, which eventually causes him to be captured to be used as a horse for the Indian War, but he will need training first. The wants versus need and the central conflict is tied together due to the fact that both are about freedom and refusing conformity. I have somewhat of an issue with this, which I will delve into later. We meet the film's antagonist, and Spirit gives everyone at the facility an extremely hard time, refusing to be broken. A Lakota tribe member named Little Creek is brought to the facility for trying to get food and has this weird dynamic with the horse. The two end up escaping together and Spirit ends up in the Lakota village. Spirit soon realizes that he is trapped once again, but by natives instead. He also meets Rain, who is very loyal and protective of her Lakota tribe. They contrast because she does whatever they say and is pleased by it while he refuses and doesn't understand why she's so loyal to them. Spirit and Rain are young and in love. Overall, her purpose is to convince him to appreciate Little Creek more. He bonds with the tribe and is conflicted when he is released go back home. He's conflicted about whether he should stay or he should leave, obviously. The Colonials show up and destroy the Lakota tribe, while Rain is shot and is presumably dead. Overall, Spirit is captured once again. Spirit and a bunch of other horses end up on a train so they can be used to help the first transcontinental railroad. It is also known as the Pacific Railroad and the Overland Route. Spirit is at his lowest point in the film as he has officially lost his freedom and everyone he cares about. He somehow realizes that the railway will run right through his living area and breaks the chains that causes him and the other horses to be attached to the railway. This changes the villain's motivation to directly go after him now. The train tips over and causes a forced fire, which leads the spirit's chain getting stuck to a tree. Luckily for him, Little Creek, who followed him the entire time, saves him from being trapped to be burnt to death. They both barely make it out of the forest fire by jumping into the river. With the two of them being safe, things seem to be going upward, but of course the third act twists 
comes into play and runs all that. The colonel and a few others show up to make it their mission to kill both Spirit and Little Creek, mostly because of the train fiasco. Instead of them being used as a prop to a bigger goal, now it's personal. Of course, a chase ensues, and it's a pretty good one. It ends when they make a damn near impossible leap over a gap between surfaces. The tribe is rebuilt. Rain is alive after the shooting. Little Creek says farewell to both horses so they can have their freedom. The two of them reunite with his herd and they all live happily ever after. If you ignore history and not Google what happened with the Lakota tribe and how the war really went down. I love the animation in the film and the blend between traditional and CGA animation is perfect which I couldn't really say for some of its predecessors and its immediate successor. The CGI does not stick out like a sore thumb like it does in El Dorado or Prince of Egypt and especially in Sinbad but we'll get to that soon. All of the characters have such a wide range of expressions and the backgrounds are astoundingly lush. One of the best pieces of animation I have ever seen in film. As a history buff, I love anything connected to real life history, and there are so many connections to it. The film takes place in the CO Wars, which went on from 1854 to 1891, with this example fitting into the 1860s, since the Lakota tribe was in what's known as modern North and South Dakota, and most of the wars in that period took place around there. Seeing them portray the events pretty accurately was nice, so they did ignore what eventually happened to the natives. Despite the lack of dialogue, the characters have a lot of personality, which I was shocked to find out. When I first watched it about 4 years ago, I found that they are one dimensional, but there's more to each of the characters than I initially thought. I was a bit harsh on the characters when I first watched it, but my mind has changed. When you have a first person perspective in the film, some of the other characters do end up suffering for it. But the strong animation and expressions definitely make up for it. The story is extremely well paced and I like that it wasn't too simple to the point where you felt like nothing happened or overwhelmed because they throw the plot point after plot point after plot point that will only make you more confused. Freedom and choice are the two main themes in the film and while those are common themes in western film in general, it's interesting to see it from the perspective of horses who are not anthropomorphic. My main gripe with the film is the music. It has tones of light 1980s rock, and the singer has a really raspy voice. The songs overall fit with what's taking place in the movie, but when I hear the score and the singing, it just throws me off completely every single time. There's just a huge whiplash whenever the songs and or score start to play, and it's very distracting, just to me. I mentioned earlier how the main theme is a slight problem, and that's only because Spirit doesn't learn anything in the entire film. He likes being free to roam around anywhere he likes in the beginning, gets captured a few times, wants the same thing, and gets it. Nothing was really learned, and he doesn't get more selfless because he was already the leader of the herd in the beginning, so looking after Rain is not a new discovery for him. It's not like he took advantage of freedom and had to learn how to really appreciate it. Still a strong character, but I am a bit confused as to what he was supposed to learn. When it opened in late May of 2002, it didn't open strongly. It held on to the later half of the top 10 films of the weekends for roughly like 3-4 to four weeks. But even still, it didn't really do well because it didn't get that strong push that would have made it a lot of money for it to rank number 1, number 2, or number 3 which makes a lot of the difference when a film opens. It made 73 million domestically for a worldwide total of 122 million dollars, meaning it didn't really do that well internationally either. Pretty much all of its competition was taken by Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and Spider-Man, with the former making over 300 million domestically and the latter making over 400 million domestically. So it's pretty fair to see what happened here. Regarding animation, it did face competition when Lilo and Stitch was released in theaters a month later. 
doubling the opening amount of spirit stallion of the Cimarron. So any chance of it recovering money from its pretty weak opening was lost when Lilo and Stitch was released. This means that Disney took back its spot and beat DreamWorks, which wasn't the case last year, as Shrek beat at both Atlantis and Monsters, Inc. Since this is the first post-Shrek film that the company made, of course comparisons were going to be made. And if you look at the comparisons of the box office, it's clear that DreamWorks knew what direction they had to go, which means that they need to abandon traditional animation and go with the formulas that Shrek and CGA animation set in motion. Despite its shortcomings with the box office, it did receive a lot of nominations from many award shows. It was nominated for the obligatory Best Animated Feature category in most of the award ceremonies, and it did win a few Annies for stuff like storyboarding, animation, and all that type of stuff. Overall, it is a shame that a film like this will never be made in Western animation again. Because the movie business relies on formula way too much to ensure success, even dumbing down almost every single aspect. The one thing you can definitely call this film is unique, because there's not a film like this one that is around. Speaking about formula, DreamWorks decided that they needed to start and execute a formula, and that was created to be similar to Shrek. Traditional animation and DreamWorks' more mature form or storytelling pretty much went out of the window soon after this film's release. What is interesting is that DreamWorks has decided to create a Netflix series based off this movie that is about to be released sometime this year. This is not the last traditionally animated film DreamWorks would make. Well, that film and traditional animation at the studio on a high note or at a distasteful note? Well, we'll find that out very soon.